So we're going to be changing the oil on our Rover 45 1.8. If you look back through our recent videos, we've been doing a lot of work to this car and we've changed the uh, head gasket and the cam belt as well as some other little pieces of work. Uh, and as part of doing that, we started to do a service. So some of the service items we've already put on the car, but we haven't yet changed the oil. So what I thought I'd do is do uh, a little separate video Video, just changing the oil and normally we would change the oil as part of a service but you may just want to change the oil so I thought it might be worthwhile just covering it as a separate little video uh, here in front of us is the stuff we use uh, what we normally do is get a standard budget oil and we've never found this to be a problem now do bear in mind we're not doing high mileage if you do really high mileage it might be worth buying a really expensive oil we prefer to buy a budget oil change it regularly and we're not doing um, high mileage but what we do first is we do an engine flush because we always think it's worth flushing the old oil through getting any dirty oil out of the car anything that's built up so we always use an engine flush there's lots out there and we've used uh, lots of different brands but at the moment we tend to use the STP one that seems to be the one that's um, cheapest online and it is still a, a known brand of course we've got the oil filter uh, that's one we uh, bought online and actually uh, there's a lot of deals where when you buy the oil you get your oil filter with it. Now I don't think that was the case with this oil but uh, it's well worth looking out for those deals. And then the most important thing we feel is to put an oil additive in. Uh, and once again we've used all the different sort of brands. We've used an STP oil additive and we've used uh, the Winds oil additive but we really do like this Lucas oil additive. It really seems to um, work well and the engine sort of runs smoother and is quieter but as I say we always feel it's more important rather than buying an expensive uh, well-known brand oil is to buy um, a really good oil additive so that's what we're going to be using to do the oil change right so we've had the engine running for about 20 minutes so it's uh, nice and warm through and what we're going to do is now add the oil flush uh, it says to uh, add it to a warm engine and then have the engine running for around about 15 minutes on fast idle so it's uh, a case of pouring it in uh, letting it run down and then restarting the engine up so that um, it then flushes through and gets out any sort of dirty uh, oil or any sludged up oil, which there shouldn't be because we keep the oil regularly changed on the cars, but we still think it's worth uh, doing it. As you can see, it's quite thin and watery. It's not like a oil or a treatment. But what we've also done is we've, we've put our oil additive uh, on the engine, uh, not right on the exhaust, it's just above the exhaust resting on this radiator pipe and what that will do is warm it up while we've got the engine running for that 15 minutes so that it pours into the car a lot easier because you'll find this is very thick and especially in the winter uh, if it's cold it will take forever for you to um, pour it into the car so letting it warm up while you're doing your engine flush uh, and draining the oil is uh, always worth doing. And that's the engine started. All we've got to do now is let it run for uh, around about 15 minutes, just keeping the revs uh, up a little bit high, really, just a kind of a fast idle. So we've had the engine running for around about 15 minutes on a uh, fast idle. Uh, now it's time to turn the engine off and then drain the oil. Right, so we're now underneath the car. As I say, we've turned the engine off and we've just let it sit a few minutes so the oil drains back down to the bottom. Uh, here is the uh, oil drain plug there. So we'll be undoing that and uh, drain the oil into our little oil drain bowl. And if you've got it all lined up, hopefully it will go straight in the bowl.
Right, so as the oil's draining out there, we just let it drain out, and uh, once it's drained out, we change the oil filter. Right, so now the oil has more or less finished coming out, just a few drips, it's time to change the oil filter. So if I just come up here, you should be able to see the oil filter uh, just above the sump. Uh, laying on its side with the um, exhaust pipe almost coming uh, over it to the side of it there. And this is the oil filter removal we always use. It's uh, a strap type but it always seems to work pretty well for us. And uh, once again, it shouldn't be difficult coming off. Uh, a little bit of tightness, but not really, really tight. And then as you unwind it, any excess oil will uh, come off. So again, um, if you've got your bowl of oil underneath, uh, it will come down. Then you can just tip the uh, rest out into the bowl. The oil is actually uh, looking fairly dirty, because you keep it um, regularly changed, they're still dirty, so it was definitely worth changing. As we say, we normally change it every two years with the mileage we do, so um, it was actually due for our regular change. And as you can see, that flush has removed any of that extra dirt, and it's actually flowed out nicely, because it does slightly thin it down as well. What we do then is just uh, clean off the surface so we're ready for the um, new oil filter to go on. Right, so there's the new oil filter. Uh, what we always do is put a little bit of the old oil just round the rubber seal, just so that seal uh, doesn't sort of get torn or damaged as you do it up for the first time. As it's on its um, side, uh, you can't put any oil into the uh, filter first, but we tend to normally never do that anyway. And all you need to do is uh, do it up uh, hand tight. just to check to make sure and that should be more than enough obviously you'll check that it's uh, not leaking once you get the engine uh, up and running but uh, that's it the last thing to do of course is to put the sump plug back in before you um, put the new oil back in And again, the only thing really to watch out for is just to not over tighten it, really. Right, so now it's time to put the oil in. It's just a case of removing the cap. And we've got a little bit of cloth around there in case uh, any of the oil spills out, which um, when you're using a full can, there's always a, a risk of that, especially with the type that uh, doesn't have one of those extendable nozzles. And this car will more or less take all of this bottle, so you won't be left with a little bit uh, spare for topping up, but not that much. Right, so we've put the oil in on the first go, as we call it. We've put um, most of it in, probably left around about uh, a litre, as you can see, because once the oil's settled and it's been through the filter and worked around the engine, you'll probably then have to top it up a little bit uh, to get it to the right level on your dipstick. But that's more than enough to initially get the oil working around. So, so we'll run the engine, let it um, re warm up, although it's quite warm anyway. And once that oil's all round, we'll check our levels, put any more than needs putting in it, and uh, then we'll then put our um, loop additive oil in. Right, so now it's time to start the engine. All you're watching for is just to make sure that the oil pressure light does go out. Normally it will go out um, pretty quickly, normally the same as uh, what it normally would do. Yeah, and the oil light's gone out. 
yes, as you see, the oil light went out fairly quickly. It might have been a little bit slower than uh, normal, but it went out quick enough to not be uh, an issue. That's really all you need to check at that stage. Now we're going to let the um, engine run for a little bit before we put the uh, oil additive in. And while it is running for the first time, it's always worth having a quick little check just to make sure there are no leaks. Uh, and I've just remembered what we didn't say is that when you're doing this you probably will have to remove that little plastic under tray we already had it removed due to uh, other work we're doing but um, you will need to remove that or it'll certainly make it easier removing that so the engine's just had a little run with the new oil in and now we're going to put in our um, oil additive as i said we've had it um, just down there on the um, pipe uh, above the exhaust so that uh, it warms up and flows a bit easy as you can see it's uh, quite a thick oil so letting it warm up like that does help now all we're going to do is just let it uh, trickle in and slowly run into the engine Yes, as you can see now, it's just steadily flowing and it will take uh, a little time, but it would have been uh, a lot, lot longer and we've not warmed it up. So we're just going to let it do that and um, then I'll come back to you. Right, so what we're going to do now is just check what the level is on the dipstick and see if we need to top it up. And we've done that after we put the oil treatment in, so that if we do need to put any more oil in, it will help to wash that oil treatment down off the um, rocker gasket. Well, I think it's going to be a job for you to uh, see that, but it is, um, with the oil treatment added, uh, dead on. So we've got quite a nice amount of um, refill. And then what we'll do is just check it again tomorrow once all the oil's drained down after we've had it running. What we'll do in a minute is start it up one last time just so that the engine does work through that um, oil treatment and that is the uh, job done. Hopefully you found that useful uh, and I thought I'd just cover us doing a engine oil change on our Rover K Series 45 uh, just in isolation so you could see the process we use and uh, what you can do if you're changing the oil. And as always, if you um, want to look at other videos, don't forget to uh, go to the homepage on our YouTube channel and have a look through what we've been doing recently and uh, our archive of playlists. Don't forget to have a little look at our Instagram and uh, Twitter page. And if you like the video, don't forget to like it and, uh, of course, subscribe it. And as always, thank you very much once again for watching.